Hello, welcome to lesson 5-3, Connecting Models and Symbols. Our learning goal for this lesson will be to use area models to divide whole numbers. There are no vocabulary terms for this lesson. We're going to go ahead and start looking at our example problem. We've been working with division in both Topic 4 and in the first two lessons of Topic 5. Today we're going to look at how we can use models to help us visually see how division works. In our example problem, we have a theater that has 375 seats arranged in rows with 15 seats in each row. How many rows are in this theater? Let r equal the number of rows. So r is our variable, and remember that is just a letter that's standing in the place of a number that we don't know yet. So there are a couple different ways that we could write this equation. We could write 15 times r is equal to 375, or 375 divided by 15 will equal r. Now, in the division model below, um, there is a rectangle and it's divided up into different parts. And I know in my class we've talked about how sometimes um, we learn the algorithm of maybe how to do division, but it's nice to take a step back and look at it visually to help us really understand division at a deeper level. Um, the example that's shown in, in this example problem is a little bit more detailed than the ones we'll be drawing. So I'm just going to talk you through this and then I'll show you a simpler way to draw um, an area model to help us with division. So this um, rectangle represents 300 of the seats that we have in this theater. And you can see it's divided up into a block of 100, another block of 100, and two blocks of 50. And so really all this is showing is you can see how um, the seats can be divided up. So if you look over here to where it talks about how can you decide that there are two tens in the quotients, 20 times 15 is 300, and 30 times 15 is 450. So the quotient is going to be in the 20s. So they aren't doing the exact problem right now. Um, they're just looking to see what would be reasonable in connecting a visual model to make sure that our division makes sense. So we're going to go ahead and go to the next slide where we have an area model again, but this time it's divided up to represent the 375 total seats in the theater. You can see it's divided into a block of 100, another block of 100, three blocks of 50, and one block of 25. And if you add all that up, that adds up to 375. And then we are, if you look at the bottom of that area model, you'll see that 15 seats are in each row. So they've divided that up into a 10 and a 5. Um, I want you now to go ahead and look over where they've worked this problem out in standard algorithm form. They have 375 divided by 15. And they've gone through and done all the steps of division, divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. And they've found that there are 25 rows of seats in the theater. Now, like I said, this is a pretty detailed model, and we will not be drawing models that are this detailed. This was just to kind of show you what it means um, as far as using area models and division. Ours are going to look more like a rectangle that's going to represent our area, and that's the way it will be represented when you take the unit assessment for topic five. So let's go ahead and look at our practice problems. You can see that this area model is much simpler than the one in the example problem. And this is what they will look like on the unit test. So we have a total number of 288, and we're dividing it by 12. You can see visually using the area model that the 288 is represented by the area that's inside the triangle. And we're dividing that up into groups of 12. So I want you to go ahead and use standard algorithm to solve this problem. Go ahead and press pause, work the problem out, and press, press play when you're ready to check your answer with mine. Did you write 24? Well, let's work this together. Here is my pen. All right, so we have 288 divided by 12. Well, I want to write this out 
um, using standard algorithms. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to use divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. When I look here, um, I cannot make any groups of 12 out of two things, so I could either move on over and look at 28, or I could put a zero right up here to hold my place. 12 times 0 equals 0. I will subtract and bring down. 12 will go into 28. 2 times 12 times 2 is 24. I will subtract and then bring down my 8. 12 will make 4 groups out of 48 things, so 12 times 4 is 48. And then I subtract and I have no remainder. So 288 divided by 12 is 24 and that was what would be represented in that area model and if I had to draw that out, I could draw a rectangle. 288 is represented by the area inside the rectangle. I'm dividing it into groups of 12. 12 times 24 would be 288. Okay, let's take a look at our practice problem number two. What is the missing dimension? So instead of giving us the problem, we're going to be asked to write it. So if you'll go ahead and write out the division problem and then um, complete the division using the standard algorithm, press play um, when you're finished, or I'm sorry, press pause and when you're finished, press play to check your answer with mine. Did you write 18? Let's take a look at a couple different ways that we could have written that problem. We could do 756 divided by 42 is equal to, and we could just use r for our variable like they did in the example, or we could do 42 times r is equal to 756. Again, let's do divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down to help us answer this problem using standard algorithm. 42 is our divisor. We're dividing 756 by 42. We can't make any groups of 42 out of 7 things, so I need to look and see how many groups of 42 I can make out of 75. I can make 1. So 42 times 1 is 42. I'm going to subtract. That 3 didn't look that great. And I get 33. Then I will bring down my 6. So I have 336. Now I'm going to have to do a little extra multiplication work over here because I don't know how many times 42 will go into 336. So a lot of times I start by just writing out some multiplication over here. 42 times 5. Let's see what that is. That's going to be 210. So I have a little ways to go to find out 42 times what is going to be 336. So I might just move up a few and try 42 times 8. And this is what I do whenever I have to work out division like this. So don't feel like you're not good at multiplication or division if you have to do this extra work. This is very important that you do this to help you get the right answer. 2 times 8 is 16. 4 times 8 is 32, plus 1 more is 33. So I found that 42 times 8 is going to be 336. And then I subtract, and I have no remainder. So that's how I get 18. Let's write this as an area model. So again, ours aren't going to be as detailed as the one in the example problem. We're starting out with 756 and 42 was what we were dividing it by and so I would get 18 for my answer over here and this is how I would represent it in an area model for division. Very similar to an array that you've probably done in the past. 
Let's look at practice problem number three. Okay, our practice problem is 672 divided by 32, and they've already shown a, um, an area model here for us to help us visualize what this problem looks like. Um, please go ahead and do the division, and press play whenever you're ready to check your answer with mine. Did you write 21? Well, let's check and see. All right, so we have 32 as our divisor. We have 672. 32, I can't make a group of 32 out of six things, so how many groups of 32 can I make out of 67 things? Well, 32 times 2 is going to give me 64. Now I'm going to subtract and bring down my 2. 32 will go into 32 one time. And I have no remainder. So 672 divided by 32 is 21. And if I draw an area model to represent this, again, I will just draw a rectangle. Inside will go 672. Put my 32 up here and my 21 here, just to so show that division in a visual way. Okay, it's already time for our challenge problem. Mr. Smith decides to spend 680 holiday dollars, excuse me, he decides to spend $680 of a holiday bonus on presents for his eight family members. If he divides the money equally, how much does he have to spend on each person? Estimate your answer and then use an array or area model to find the exact quotient. Explain your answer and show your work in your journal. So you can go ahead and estimate this if you would like um, using some of the skills that we worked on earlier. And then go ahead and do standard algorithm to help you make sure that you have the actual answer for your problem. And then draw one of those simple area models using a rectangle to visually show um, the division problem. Make sure you explain your answer and show all of your work in your journal so that you can check it tomorrow when you come to class. So let's finish up. Please review your learning goals. Have you mastered them? Do you need to go back and practice or review again? I know that first example model had a lot of detail and can seem a little tricky, but just remember, um, as long as you can draw just the rectangular area models, that's the way you will be assessed, and just as long as you can draw those to visually show um, the division that you've done, then you're in great shape. Um, you have now completed Lesson 5-3, Connecting Models and Symbols to Find Quotients. We'll see you tomorrow at school.